This demo highlights the preview options from mobile for administrators and developers when building Lightning Web Components and viewing Lightning Web Components with mobile in mind. Here I have my Power Hour page with my contacts. Let's go ahead and edit the page. I'm now in Lightning App Builder. In Lightning App Builder, you can see the default view is desktop, but I'm also able to use the drop down to be able to select and preview for my phone and tablet as well. Now I've already created some custom components, so we'll go ahead and drag over the contact creator to the page. Okay, and this component allows me to add new contacts to my Byte Card account. Now let's go over and drag the Byte Card component onto the page as well. And for this component, I can see the name, the description, the category types of uh, bicycle there, and then the price. Okay, I need to make a few changes to my Byte Card component, so let's save this page in Lightning App Builder and head on over to Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio, I want to update my Byte Card component and make a few changes. This is the HTML of my component, and just like in the Lightning App Builder, you can see I have name, description, the categories, and the price. Before I make any changes to the component, let's take a look at the existing component. Let's go over to Byte Card, and then I right-click, and then I say Preview Component Locally. And once I do that, I can see that I have three options, Desktop, Android, and iOS Simulators. I select to use iOS Simulator, and it goes out and it searches Xcode for the list of simulators that I have access to, and then I choose iPhone 12 Simulator. And then the mobile extension goes off and it launches my iPhone 12 simulator with my component already embedded in there. And as you can see, this component is identical to the one that I was previewing in Lightning App Builder. So now let's go ahead and make some changes. Now I want to go ahead and add color to the description as well, because sometimes it's difficult to see the color directly from the image. Okay, and so I want it to say color, space, and then grab the color from the data. Okay, now so I'm going to save my changes, and one of my favorite features here is that I automatically see the changes as I develop. I don't need to go through the preview options. Again, it automatically refreshes for me. And I see now it has color, space, and red uh, in the field box as well. Now the last thing I want to do is I want that price to pop. I'm going to make it green, and I'm going to make it bold. Now I'll go back over to VS Code, and I'm going to go over to my CSS file, which is an optional file, and I'm going to add the styling uh, for the price variable to make that green and bold. Now I'll save my changes once again to see them instantly reflected. Okay, now I can see the price has also been updated. It's green and it's bold. And I think I'm done at this point making changes to my component. So now I'm going to go ahead and publish this component back over to my org. Okay, VS Code publishes the source back over to the org and it tells me once it's complete. And then let's go back now over to Lightning App Builder. And then I can just easily just refresh my page to see the changes I've made to my component. I can see that the color has been added and the price has been updated. Now I notice this table is really long and not great for mobile. So let's go ahead and customize it and state it as desktop only. I'll add a new filter for the field device and then form factor. So then device form factor equals desktop. Okay, and now that's complete. Let's take a look at the byte card component and let's do the opposite. I want it to be on any form factor except for desktop. So I do a similar filter where all for field, I'll select device form factor. But now here I'll specify not equal to desktop and that it means it'll render on phones and tablets. Okay, and now I'll save my changes. Okay, let's now view the Power Hour page. And you can see here I no longer have that byte component on this page. Let's take a look at this page in my Salesforce mobile app. I've downloaded and installed the emulator build of the Salesforce mobile app and put it on my emulator. And so let's open it up and I can see the Byte card component is here with all the changes that I've made. I can also see the content creator form is there. But when I scroll down even further, I see that the table is not there because it's not meant for the phone form factor. Another nice feature of the emulator build is that I can link it up to the Safari or the Chrome dev kits for the emulators. 
I'm using an iOS emulator, so let's open up the Safari dev kit and tell it to link up to my Salesforce mobile app. Once it's connected to the Salesforce mobile app and the emulator build, I can see everything about my app. I can see the what's displayed in the view, and then I can search for specific things and make changes in the session. For example, say I want to play with and alter a few things for this contact input form. Let's look at first name. Let me search for first name. Okay, and now I have found first name. I can scroll down to it. And let me change it to something like, instead of first name, given name. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, and I can see given name in the form. And remember, this is only session-based, so I can just refresh the app to get rid of all the changes that I've made. I can also add breakpoints so that I can better debug my app. And I can also see any errors that are coming back from using the app, as well as any warnings that uh, may be useful to me as well. Now that we've seen how you can preview and debug with the Salesforce mobile app on an emulator, let's see how easy it was for me to download and install the Salesforce mobile app on an emulator. Let me get out of the app, and then I'll go ahead and remove it. Now I'll also bring over my Android emulator, and I'll also show downloading the Salesforce mobile app and installing it on an Android emulator. Now let's go to the mobile debugging tool site and download the Salesforce mobile app for iOS emulator. And then I'll also download the Salesforce mobile app for Android emulator. Once the zip files are downloaded, you extract it, and then you drag it over for the Android emulator and then you drag over the .app file for the iOS emulator. And that's it, you're set. All that's left now is to open up the apps and then you would log in to your sandbox site or your playground or whatever location it is that you're building your Salesforce application and view it within the Salesforce mobile app. Thanks for watching this video on how to build, preview, and debug with Salesforce mobile tools. Be sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and click that bell for notifications every time we post a video.